Hello everyone, it's Foo here, and with the Indigo Disc DLC right around the corner, I thought it was about time that we look back at the Teal Mask DLC to go over some of the things that you might have missed. And these are interesting changes and mechanics that came with the Teal Mask DLC. They come in two broad categories. There are some things that have a significant impact on competitive battles, but are generally hidden mechanics or aren't explained in the game. However, you may already be aware of these because of their impact on the competitive metagame. And then there are some things without such an impact on the competitive metagame that aren't hidden so much, but you just might have missed because they weren't really game changing, but are still pretty interesting changes that were made in the Teal Mask DLC. And the first example is one of those. So this is the introduction of a new item in the Teal Mask, which is called the Fairy Feather. This is one of the least fun items to actually obtain in the game, in my opinion, because you have to complete Ogre Ousting on normal, and it's really frustrating. I don't know, maybe I was just bad at Ogre Ousting and everyone else found it easy, but this took a few tries for me to get, which was kind of annoying when I just wanted to make a video about it. So this is a held item, and it has the effect of boosting the user's fairy type moves by 20% which is a pretty decent item effect. We've got items like this for other types. The issue is that we actually already have an item like this for fairy types. So it seems like this is pretty redundant. We already have the pixie plate that has exactly the same effect. So the fairy feather really is very limited in what it actually adds to the game. Now there are two scenarios where I actually think this can have an impact in competitive play. The first one, is that in VGC, the official competitive format, there is the item clause, so you can only have one of each item on your team. So if you have two offensive fairy types and you want both of them to have an item with this effect, previously you could only run one of them with the pixie plate and then you'd have to choose a different item for the other. Now you can have pixie plate and fairy feather. Thing is, it's kind of unlikely that this will be the scenario because the most common fairy type offensive Pokemon aren't really running the Pixie Plate already. So for example, Fluttermane is generally holding Choice Specs or Booster Energy. You see a bit of Enamorous that's generally Choice Specs. And Sylveon isn't seen so much. Sometimes it does run the Pixie Plate, but you don't really see it that much anymore. So it's not like we were screaming out for the Fairy Feather to be added to the game. However, I recently watched a video by Jamie Boyt, a very good VGC player whose content I really enjoy, and he explained why he gave his Urshifu the splash plate when many other competitive players use the Mystic Water. And again, these two items, very similar to Pixie Plate and Fairy Feather, they have a an identical effect. He explained that in a previous format, he had used a Razor Claw Kartana. In his battle, his opponent asked him whether the crits he was getting were due to the item he was holding, but they asked if he was holding the scope lens, to which he could truthfully answer he was not holding the scope lens. He didn't have to add that he was holding an item with an identical effect that boosts the critical hit ratio of the Pokemon. That meant that the opponent assumed that he must then be using the other most common item, which was the Assault Vest, meaning that the opponent adapted their plays because of that. And it also meant that Jamie Boyd himself didn't have to lie and there was no gamesmanship involved. So that's potentially another reason why you can hold the fairy feather because an opponent who's more familiar with a pixie plate might ask, are you holding the pixie plate? And you can truthfully say, no, I'm not. So having knowledge of this item can be pretty important. And that's why I thought it would be an interesting topic for this video. It's definitely not a game changing item, but knowing it exists could actually come into play in competitive battles. The second change I want to mention is another one that doesn't really have an impact on competitive, but it's a pretty interesting mechanics change. And technically, this wasn't the Teal Mask DLC, it was the patch update just before the Teal Mask DLC that brought this change. But it's a buff to the ability Illuminate. Illuminate, prior to Generation 9, didn't have any in-battle effect. Its effect was to increase your encounter chance when walking through long grass. However, in Generation 9, we don't have long grass encounters anymore, so Illuminate would be completely useless because it doesn't have an in-battle effect and its out-of-battle effect is now redundant. So this was updated in Generation 9. Now Illuminate prevents the user from having their accuracy lowered. 
And not only that, they actually ignore the opposing Pokemon's evasion boosts too, although that's not written into the text. So this actually has an in-battle effect now. It's not particularly useful in most competitive formats because accuracy and evasion strategies are luck-based and aren't consistent, so you don't really see them used too much in competitive play. But technically, it is a buff. And prior to the Teal Mask DLC, this was irrelevant because there weren't any Pokemon with this ability. But we do now have Volbeat that can have Illuminate. And it, again, it's not really going to be relevant because Volbeat has the much superior Prankster ability. It won't really use any of its other abilities because Prankster is so good. And that's true for pretty much all users of Illuminate. The only Pokemon that you might potentially see Illuminate used on is Shinotic because it doesn't really have amazing other abilities. One is Effect Spore, which generally I would advise against using with Shinotic because Shinotic is a Spore Pokemon. You try to put other Pokemon to sleep, and if they touch you and get poisoned before you can Spore them, that can be pretty bad. So generally Effect Spore is not the best on Shinotic. And then there's Rain Dish, and if you're not running a Rain Team, then Rain Dish can be of limited use too. So you might consider using Illuminate so that in case you come up against like an evasion boosting opponent, you can try to put them to sleep because you ignore those evasion boosts with Illuminate. However, even then, I think that there's a very limited use case because generally Rain Dish could still be useful if the opponent has a Rain Team. Another weird thing to come out of this is that Watchog one of the early route gen 5 normal type Pokemon. I felt the need to clarify that because it is such an obscure Pokemon that we haven't seen in a very long time. Watchog has two abilities that do exactly the same thing now because it had Keen Eye already, which again, prevents accuracy drops and ignores opponent's evasion, and it has Illuminate. So that's pretty funny. What's also funny is that it has Analytic as its hidden ability, which will always be superior to the other two. But that's all irrelevant anyway, because Watchog is completely useless and you'll never see it used in competitive Pokemon anyway. So now we're moving on to things that do have a competitive impact that you should probably be aware of. A lot of players are already aware of this, but I felt that it was appropriate to include in a video like this, just to spread the knowledge. So we had Weezing return in the Teal Mask DLC, and it came with its neutralizing gas ability. Both Galarian and normal forms of Weezing have this neutralizing gas ability. It suppresses all other abilities of Pokemon on the field. And in previous games, this hasn't affected kind of form changing abilities. So things like Aegislash's stance change wouldn't have been affected. And we see that carried on into these games like Palafin's Zero to Hero is not affected by neutralizing gas. However, one kind of form changing ability that previously would not have been affected by this was Commander Tatsugiri's ability, which allows it to go into Dondozo's mouth and boost all of its stats by plus two. However, this has been changed in the game so that neutralizing gas can now stop Tatsugiri going into Dondozo's mouth. So Weezing can be a pretty interesting answer to Dondozo Tatsugiri teams, apart from that Dondozo Tatsugiri teams are now evolving, so a lot of Dondozo Tatsugiri players are aware of this because they have to be, and they can put the ability shield on Tatsugiri, which is an item which means that their abilities cannot be stopped from activating. So this is all just to ensure that the Tatsugiri Dondozo combination gets off, even if the opponent has this wheezing, which usually is a complete block to it. That's just a really interesting evolution and the one real use case that I've seen for Ability Shield in competitive Pokemon. All that I found really interesting though, so I thought it was worth mentioning here. Another reason to mention Weezing is its interaction with Ogapon. So when Ogapon terrestrializes, its ability changes to Embody Aspect, which activates straight away and gives it a stat boost depending on the mask that it's holding. If you switch the terrestrialized Ogapon out and switch it back in, it will get that Embody Aspect stat boost back, which is really nice, so you don't lose it for switching out. Obviously, if Weezing is on the field, then that ability won't activate until Weezing faints or switches out, and then you'll get your Embody Aspect boost. But what's really interesting about this is that if you terrestrialize and get your Embody Aspect, then bring Weezing in and switch it out again, you don't get another Embody Aspect activation, which is strange because with other abilities that activate upon switching, like Intimidate, you would get a second Intimidate if Weezing came in and then went back out again. 
This means that you can't, for example, stack attack boosts with Ogrepon Hearth Flame by bringing Weezing in and switching it out again. So that's a really specific interaction between Ogrepon and Weezing that it could be useful to be aware of if you do plan on using Weezing. Speaking of Ogapon, one hidden mechanic that most people are aware of now, but it's a really important one to know if you're not, if you give it one of its massed items, it will boost all of Ogapon's moves by 20% power, which is a really, really big boost. And it's not just to its Ivy Cudgel, it's not just to its stab moves, so Ivy Cudgel plus any of its grass moves, but it's to all of its coverage moves. So even if it's running Play Rough, Stomping Tantrum, Knock Off, that is going to get the power boost from holding the mask. So that's a really, really powerful item. There aren't many other items that have such a powerful effect, allowing Ogre Pond to get a damage boost, change its type, change the type of its Ivy Cudgel so that it retains stab. It's just really, really strong and definitely something to be aware of because it will affect damage calculations. And it's important to mention because in terms of the items themselves, it does not explain that at all in game. In the game, it just says, when held, this item will change Ogre Pond's form. So I thought it was worth mentioning here. And the last thing that I want to mention, which is pretty common knowledge now, and I've already done a video about it, is that Diplin can hold the Eevee Light, even though it doesn't have an evolution, which gives it a 50% boost to both of its defenses, making it really, really bulky. It can be quite an interesting support Pokemon with its speed control in Syrup Bomb and its ability that drops the opponent's evasion. It sticks around, it can heal its allies with Pollen Puff. All that's really cool. But it's a nice segue into the fact that it's probably getting an evolution really soon in the Indigo Disc DLC, so I can't wait to see what that looks like. And I think that that's an appropriate note to end this video on. If you learned something new in the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content. If not, you must be a very clever and very cool person that likes Pokemon content a lot, and maybe you should subscribe anyway. But thanks so much for watching. All that's left to be said is I've been Fu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.